no secret that Doom Eternal is out in a month or so, and the only thing that's more eternal than Doom itself is just how long this wait has felt. Now, again, I got the opportunity to play through Doom Eternal at Bethesda's HQ in Sydney. They threw a black bag over my head, drove me around for six hours until we finally reached their offices, then they let me go to town for three or four hours. Pretty much everything I did though was the exact same as last time, so that just includes the first three levels of the finished campaign. But I had the benefit of being able to take my time a bit more and to try playing around with the other mechanics and go secret and lore hunting. It let me check out some of the weapon mods I missed last time, like the full auto mode for the shotgun, which is incredibly awesome and gonna come in handy against some of the tougher demons. I spent a bit more time searching for secret errors and I managed to get that footage of that daisy easter egg that I referred to in my last video. Also, most importantly, I spared that poor Revenant from catching a super shotgun blast to the face. I mean, look at him. I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. One of the main things I wanted to do was just spend a bit more time in the Doom Fortress, the Slayer's Lunar Base of Operations. And I gotta say, there's just so much stuff going on here, it's kind of insane. For starters, there's probably a couple dozen locked off rooms that contain upgrades like weapon mods, Praetor suit points, and Sentinel crystals. There's a few different skins for the Slater unlock. There's the one from OG Doom, which I think everyone's probably seen at this point. There's the suit from Doom 2016, and another one I found that kinda looks like this weird ancient gladiator outfit or something. Now, I don't know what the point of these are going to be, considering you spend like 90% of your time in a first-person perspective. But it's something else to work towards, so, I mean, I guess you can't complain. In the Slayer's Man Cave, he's got all these cool-looking guitars hanging up on the wall. There's a shelf where you see all the secret collectibles you found. A bunch of books where the titles are all references to mostly other first-person shooters. Again, something I think most people have seen by now. But on the top of the shelf is a skull that's wearing Commander Keen's helmet, which is pretty cool. On his desktop, where he's rocking three monitors like an absolute Chad, you can even see the Soul Cube from Doom 3, as well as a bunch of other little figurines. Then an old computer with a CRT monitor, which is used to activate all of the floppy disk cheats you find in the levels. And of course, his beloved portrait with Daisy. The one new thing I got to play this time was one of the Slayer Gates from way later in the game. Now, the Slayer Gates are these challenges you unlock, which teleport you to these arenas, where you've then got to survive and kill this seemingly never-ending swarm of spawning demons. Every time you finish one of these, you get an Empyrean Key, and once you've got all the keys, you can then unlock the Unmaker back on the Doom Fortress, which is that absurdly overpowered gun from Doom 64 that makes the plasma rifle look like a water pistol. So yeah, you're gonna wanna find these gates and complete this stuff. For people who complained about how there weren't enough enemies to kill in Doom 2016, well, this is the answer to that. You're often quite literally being attacked by a dozen demons at once here, and this shit is just fucking harrowing. What's also important to note is that I chose to play at this time on the Nightmare difficulty instead of Ultraviolence. Ultraviolence mode feels like it punishes you just the right amount. I mean, if you make a mistake or get sloppy, you can usually recover and keep going. On Nightmare difficulty though, that's not quite the case. The jump from Ultraviolence to Nightmare is huge, I think even more so than it was in Doom 2016. If you make any kind of mistake on this difficulty, you're more often than not just dead. It's particularly harder during the earlier levels because at that point you've only got like two or three weapons, so you don't really have that many options for dealing out damage or crowd control. It's also very heavily dependent on the mods you're using for your guns, and there are mods that I think are pretty much bad choices in some situations. I've still yet to find a really good use for the precision shot for the heavy machine gun. Now look, I get that it's used for targeting weak spots, but I just think the micro missiles are so much more useful. I also kind of really started to appreciate the glory kills as well, only because it gave me a much needed second or two to quickly scan my surroundings and think about what I had to do next. I could check how much chainsaw fuel I had, if my grenades or flamethrower were on cooldown, or just quickly consider all the other enemies that I had attacking me and what weapon I should swap to next. I think there's a definite tactic in using these strategically to give yourself a quick breather. Now, when I got up to play this late game Slayer Gate, at this point that also given me all of the weapons and pretty much enough skill points to max out a few of these and some of the suit's abilities, which ironically makes the whole thing a lot easier. The new demons in this bit include the Pain Elementals, which are honestly one of the toughest motherfuckers so far in the entire game. These things just take a whole heap of damage before going down. Another 
another one that I really started to hate with a passion that burnt more than an asshole after a curry binge was the whiplashes. These are these snake looking dudes that move around super fast and can kill you in seconds with these big chain whips. It's not fun. It was cool too though because I did get to play around with the rest of the weapons in the game as well as the mods that come with them and experiment a fair bit with loadouts and the rune builds. The single most important rune I think in the game, especially for people doing nightmare runs, is going to be this one that lets you survive a killing blow. Instead of dying, it slows the game down for like 4 or 5 seconds, allowing you to get your bearings and figure out how to get the hell out of harm's way. No pun intended. At this point too, I had the ballista, the chain gun, and the goddamn BFG. The ballista, I didn't really use it all that much. I mean, it just felt like the gauss gun from Doom 2016, but with a much slower charge up time. The chain gun, again, I didn't use all that much, though the secondary fire mode that brings up a shield I thought was pretty cool. Most of the time though, I just used something else. The problem is that it really limits your mobility when firing and standing still is not what you really want to be doing here. What really makes the combat deep at this point though is the gear mods and the weapon masteries. Masteries are what you achieve after unlocking all of the mods for a gun and then completing some kind of weapon challenge. One of the best masteries I think in the entire game is that you can upgrade the super shotgun so that the meat hook actually sets enemies on fire when you grapple into them, kind of mirroring the flame belch. This is a good thing because you can launch into an enemy and get a bunch of armor back pretty much instantly. Also upgrading the ice grenade so that damaging or killing frozen enemies causes them to drop bundles of health gives you a much needed secondary chance for recovering health outside of just the glory kills. Anyway, I'll stop shilling the game and let you see one of my playthroughs for this endgame Slayer Gate. This was my second attempt on the Nightmare difficulty. Full disclaimer, there's some moments in there where I could have done better, and I forgot to use a lot of my weapons and weapon mods. Anyway, enjoy the video, and hopefully the next time I'll be talking about this game is next month when it's finally out.